Uh, somebody said I sound like a weatherman, uh, so let me do my best impression here before we get into Game 5. Uh, I am here in Massachusetts at East Hampton, 72 degrees, North Hampton, 72 degrees, East Hampton, uh, West Hampton, 72 degrees, uh, Worcester, 71 degrees. Okay, that's the best I got. Okay, enough of that nonsense. Uh, let's move on to Game 5. Um, what I will say here in the transition is thanks for being here. Uh, obviously, it is much appreciated by me. If you want to catch me on my channel, I do a lot of weeknights, 9 Eastern. Uh, I want to thank SMB for guiding me through this. I know Vubli does not pressure anybody for donations, so I won't either. But all of the donations so far are greatly appreciated. It also is greatly appreciated that you guys are here and being part of this. Uh, so, without further ado, SMB, do you feel ready for Game 5? I do indeed. I look forward to it. I'm ready. I wish I had your stamina. I'm like getting uh, intravenous injections over here, uh, <laughs> taking salts and fluids. Uh, game three has begun. I will switch over the broadcast in just a moment. And hopefully we can get this at the right speed. If you actually don't touch the speed controls, everything should be fine, I think. Just breathe. When we start everything. pausing and adjusting is, what, is where, where we get into trouble. Okay, so I have not touched the speed, but the villagers look like they're going fast. We're going to have to, we'll fix this in the future. But again, I will pin this on 51%. My apologies, SMB. Uh, I will get this worked out. Uh, but we're seeing Yingwa again in blue, Vivi again in red. Very nice of them to keep their colors throughout. That helps me a lot. Uh, if we look at Yingwa's map, we see gold on the front, berries on the front, secondary gold on the front, tertiary gold to the side, and secondary stone way off to the side. Interesting little deer patch here, uh, double boar steel potential location there for Vivi. Vivi can come and grab those boars. And Yingwa is incredibly open, in my humble opinion. It seems like the front of this will not be closed, and this gold will be hard to protect. Meanwhile, on the other side, we see... Vivi uh, with berries on the front, primary gold on the front at a downhill slope. Uh, lots of stone and gold clustered here on the front of Vivi's side. Interesting to see if a tower or two from Yingwa could take that away. Meanwhile, on the back, we are seeing a uh, little bit of a sparse wood line, but all in all, I think this is an okay map. I mean, really both players not having very good maps. What is your opinion, SMB? Yeah, I think they're both pretty bad, but Yingwa's borders on the absolutely horrific um, wood line in the back. It's kind of weird looking, but I guess it could be okay to put a second lumber camp on. The problem is if he loses that, he doesn't really have, like if, if that starts getting harassed, it's pretty much going to be permanently interrupting his ability to gather wood. But the gold positions are universally horrible, every single one being kind of way out in the open and two of them at the bottom of pretty big hills which um, Vivi can actually get onto that hill from his own base because it extends all the way it's like a big plateau in the western side of the map so um, this map really I mean if I was playing it and I had a restart available this would be an automatic restart for me I can reveal because you wouldn't actually notice that by this point both players had used their restarts so they were forced to play these maps that they were confronted with we do see Yingwa stealing a decent number of sheep in the bottom of Vivi's base actually there. He's just found three, but one of them has continued on its original pathing towards Vivi's TC anyway. <laughs> He's actually sending them to his opponent, so that's incredible sportsmanship from Yingwa. He's found three of his opponent's sheep, and in this Game 5 decider, he sent them to his opponent. Absolutely right. Uh, love to see the sportsmanship. Sometimes sportsmanship is just as fun as laming. Uh, in that case, that is really, uh, I believe we can call Yingwa a mensch for that. Uh, that is really great uh, sportsmanship. Uh, three on wood for Yingwa, uh, four on wood for Vivi. Again, this is game five. This is a Huns war. Hopefully I've updated the score properly, and it is two to two. We are seeing a very nice set of matches between these two players. These are the first time these matches are available to be seen. Uh, they were played a little bit ago. Uh, they are recorded, but uh, were not able to be streamed live. I'm Killer B. Glad to be joined today by SMB, who is a fantastic commentator. I'm learning so much from him. Uh, and, yeah, we will continue to work our way through Game 5. And uh, do you want to make a prediction for Game 5 since we've both been blinded to the results? Who do you think wins Game 5, SMB? 
I actually cannot make my like, prediction because um, I do know this the score of this one, so I'm gonna maybe not say as much. <laughs> I'll make a prediction. I'm, I'm in it for the Vivster here. Uh, I want to see the underdog. Uh, in my opinion, Vivi with a little bit lower rating, uh, being a little bit of an underdog here. I'm I'm in it for the underdog. Hopefully, the chat's with me. It's good to see the underdog win from time to time. Again, for those of you tuning in, uh, maybe you've checked out Vivi's profile. Vivi claiming to be a 56-year-old uh, 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 woman from Korea. Uh, that is almost definitely a troll. Uh, but in case you were interested, uh, there is a funny little profile for Vivi123. Uh, and yeah, until we get a little more action, we are just kind of hanging out here. Very normal Dark Age build for both players. You guys have seen Hun Hun's Wars before. I'm sure you are anticipating uh, pretty much what's been happening so far. A couple deer being pushed here for Yingwa. Uh, Vivi is getting some scouting in. If we look at Vivi's Fog of War, uh, Vivi has not actually found Yingwa yet. Uh, obviously, Yingwa has found Vivi, uh, at least found Vi has found Vivi's sheep. If we look at the Fog of War, we can see that uh, Yingwa has not actually located all of those resources that are clustered on the front. He hasn't located any of those. Uh, so interestingly, we will not see any sort of tower rush there or any, he might not even know to pressure there, obviously having no view at all of that part of the map. Uh, the scout is in place still, but is pushing deer, uh, and that could be a little bit serendipitous here for Vivi, who I am cheering for wholeheartedly. Announcers are supposed to be uh, impartial, but guess what? I don't care about those rules. I'm in it for Vivi. Feudal Age click up at the same time. Uh, Vivi will be uh, technically two seconds behind, but both players on 21 vils, and you guys probably know what that means. Uh, potentially, uh, I, I never try to make pred predictions because I'm always wrong, but I think we're going to see scouts here from both players and a little bit of pressure. Yeah, both players looking like scouts. I think slight difference in in their builds in that um, Vivi had five on wood a little bit earlier. Um, Ooh, hold on that, my Vivi. friend. Sorry to interrupt you. I see villagers coming Ooh, forward yes, here indeed. for Vivi. They are going to do something interesting. Continue. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Well, no, obviously, what I was about to say was that there's slight differences in the builds because uh, Vivi just transitioning to more villages on wood slightly earlier, which um, could be due to the fact that he was planning to go forward, which means he's going to need um, a decent, good amount of wood, but not benefiting from having pushed in deer, um, whereas he uh, does have that. But they are building their barracks right next to each other, which is going to make this a very, very interesting um, forward indeed. But Absolutely. I'm just going to look at Vivi's scout. He does see both of those forward golds, so he, he doesn't know about the wood line, but he can assume it's towards the back because he hasn't found it, but he already knows he can abuse the golds of um, Vivi. I'd have liked to have seen him scout a little bit more to find the wood and potentially where his stone and third gold is, but he already knows enough to know that he can do a very effective forward on the golds in combination with the hill. Um, mm -hmm. Although Yinghua was... Uh, looking like a scout build he hasn't placed a stable because he saw the forward early enough and is doing defensive archery range and possibly even coming out to have a massive build war which is going to be a lot of fun yeah absolutely we're going to see villagers and spears in the mix we are not going to see scouts uh yingla's intention is to wall up this range we're seeing uh skirmishers coming out for both players and we're going to see a pretty mirrored battle here whoever's micro is better is going to get the advantage here. Of course, Yinghua is dedicating a lot more villagers to this fight. Uh, actually, about the same amount to the fight itself, but many more villagers are dedicated to walling in that archery range. And it looks like, at least for now, he has a decent chance of getting those palisades completed. Big micro battle here on the front. Lots of aggression here, villager on villager violence. Uh, and skirmishers in the mix just doing a little bit of annoyance here from time to time. Uh, in the end, it seems like uh, Yinghua can finish these walls around the archery range, and I wonder if Vivi is a little bit in trouble here. Uh, Yinghua really committed to taking down that forward with lots of villagers, and I think it's the right choice. SMB, are you with me on that? I, love the con I just love the conga line that's going on with it, how Vivi had five villagers chasing one skirmisher and the conga line of Yinghua's villagers all chasing them behind in single file. I think if he can get that wall up then on the archery range, it's obviously going to be massive, but I don't know whether he's going to be able to manage it. Um, 
this could this would now be his opportunity, but it's, you, obviously you don't know what the players are microing. But he's got he's got the chance to do those last few tiles of Palisade, but seems to have forgotten about that for the moment and is preferring to go and chase after um, Vivi's units some more. I totally agree with you. One more Vil going back and putting down, I think, just one or two more Palisades here. Uh, three Palisades here that need to be, uh, at least have one hammer thrown down he's on going them. for it now. There he's it goes. It. There it goes. So, uh, Vivi with the aggression. Uh, this forward is not looking terribly viable at the moment, and it looks like Yingwa will have the advantage, at least for now, in Game 5. Uh, really doing a very nice job of committing quite a few villagers to taking down that forward. Uh, he made no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, he brought enough villagers to make sure that he could win that battle. And at the moment, it is 24 bills for Vivi and 26 for Yingwa. Yeah, the main issue is now that uh, Yingwa is going to be able to continue to produce skirmishes, and although they don't kill very villagers very easily, he will be able to mass those up enough to start going and doing a great deal of harassment back at Vivi's base. Um, and Vivi has basically nothing there. He's looking wide open to even just a hand, tiny handful of skirmishes actually going in there and um, doing significant damage in terms of idling and harassment. That's why Vivi's going for a stable I think because he's probably expecting Ingwa to continue on this with the skirmishes but actually uh, archer transition is on his mind he's producing a first archer and going to gold you can see a, to a whole bunch of Vivi skirmishes trapped in that archery range I don't know whether he mistakenly continued production there um, after it was fully walled in because I don't think he had all of those queued up or garrisoned in the range when it was finished wall being walled up a little bit may have been quickly flicking through to it and producing the skirmishes without even realizing it was gone. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but a little bit of a poor micro there from Yingwa. He had one villager chase all of Vivi's villagers all the way back, and Vivi's TC was able to kill that bill for free. Uh, so at least Vivi getting the consolation prize of grabbing one free vill. At the moment, that archery range has been deleted, and uh, Vivi is working on the walls, uh, trying to get those skirms out. We see a tower here in defense for Yingwa. That's going to be good to protect this gold. A offensive tower from Vivi. Vivi having, uh, looks like, less villagers in the mix to build that tower, uh, and being harassed by archers. I think that Yingwa is going to win the race with the towers. Yeah, he's definitely winning this now. He's a good 15 or 20 percent of the tower ahead, and that's going to mean a couple of villager kills, most likely, if those tower arrows strike true. Ooh, that tower's been abandoned from Vivi, so Vivi will get that tower partially up, but it's not all the way. And Vivi... I love the skirmishes trapped in the pen to die. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That... So, you don't see this stuff very often. Go on. So Vivi <laughs> is going to continue with aggression here, which is interesting. Couple of scouts in the mix. Uh, we can see that those are not upgraded at all. We can see archery range coming. Uh, again, another forward archery range from Vivi. Vivi is not going to give up on the aggression here in game five. As you all know, I am pulling for Vivi, uh, but it is not looking terribly good. That forward was really rebuffed as pretty much as... Uh, with extreme prejudice, I suppose I would say, uh, that forward is just absolutely cooked, uh, and it looks like Yingwa is going to have a major, major advantage going forward. Although those yeah, scouts... Can't... Never mind, those yeah, scouts won't get in. Go ahead, end. sir. Yeah, I was going to say, I, just, I can't disagree with you there. Vivi is continuing with the forward pressure because I think that he probably realizes he isn't going to make his way back into the game if he kind of retreats into a shell and goes past if he needs to try and make something happen here and this tower on the goal is going to be very nice um, in terms of stopping Yingwa from gathering gold but Yingwa has got more army presence and could probably move to another gold anyway so even if the tower has been finished was finished which it hasn't been because it's been deleted I don't think it would have enough to pull Vivi back into this Another villager down there for Vivi. The count is now plus three for Yingwa, uh, and it looks like it is Yingwa's game to win. Uh, but hey, you never know. Uh, Vivi is kind of playing with house money here, uh, in my humble opinion. Really taking a player who is very strong uh, to his limits to five games. Uh, so I am thoroughly entertained with these sets of matches. 
uh, and we'll continue to see how these skirmisher, this skirmisher archer mix uh, does against Vivi. Still scouts on the field for Vivi, uh, still trying to find an angle of attack for those. Seems a little indecisive about whether to go forward or to come back and combat this skirmisher and archer mix from Yingwa. Yingwa on the hill is not going to grab this low HP Vil, uh, but will be in Vivi's, all up in Vili, Vivi's grill. Uh, and we're seeing Vivi going again for that tower, but Yingwa will see it again or... Has he seen it? He's moved and he's not actually chasing that vill, so maybe that vill is still safe. Uh, Vivi doing a little bit of sneakiness there, leaving one vill behind and retreating the rest. Uh, maybe that's something we can keep an eye on and hopefully we'll see something cool come out of that. Uh, meanwhile, we're seeing increased aggression from Yingwa on the front, using the hill advantage and certainly taking a very good battle here against Vivi. Uh, Vivi is done. Good game from Vivi on 21 minutes and 57 seconds. So there you have it. Although I was cheering for Vivi, it appears that Yingwa will take this series. It not only appears that way, it is that way. Uh, so it is going to be 3-2 to two for Yingwa. Any final thoughts, SMB, before we head back out to the lobby? Yeah, I think it, it, a lot of it comes down to the fact that Vivi's forward was detected so early on. If Yingua had uh, not spotted it um, due to not seeing that bias coming up, then he may have laid down a stable, um, which isn't generally a, a fantastic response to a forward in the, in the initial stages. Um, and that could have made it very different. But um, Yingwa also making a very good decision to rush out with a lot of villagers from near his TC, whereas Vivi's couldn't really reinforce his villagers into the fight so quickly. Um, and then the range being walled up ended up being pretty pivotal because it means that Yingwa had a minute or two um, where he was producing military and Vivi wasn't. And from that moment, he really kind of solidified his defense and Vivi was always behind and requiring a, a Hail Mary to get back into it. Absolutely agree. I think uh, uh, Vivi kind of came forward with a lot of aggression. Uh, in a game five that actually matters, you can see players choke, but in this game we saw Yingwa really hold up mentally, uh, committed just the perfect amount of villagers to take down that forward, and that was really the end of the, the beginning of the end, or maybe even the middle of the end of that series. So I'll update the score. Even though we are done here, uh, I do want to give Yingwa the satisfaction and Yingwa's fans the satisfaction of seeing that he has won three to two. Uh, and yeah, so thanks for being here. Uh, again, I'm Killer B. I'm here with SMB, who is incredibly, incredibly nice to be hanging out with me and keeping the first stream of mine on the Vubli official channel uh, going strong. And yeah, man, I really appreciate you being here. This was awesome. Yeah, I really enjoyed myself. It's an awesome first stream, by the way. Um, it's, like, it's been really pleasurable, and I think it's gone absolutely great. And there's been a great deal of appreciation in the chat. Um, so uh, I hope that you will be well up for doing some more with Vubli Official in the future. Um, and look forward to that if you, you are indeed, if, if that is indeed the case. Absolutely, my friend. Can't wait for such things. Hopefully I can bring a little more knowledge and maybe match you next time. I feel like uh, I need to go and do some studying, but this was a whole lot of fun. Hopefully you guys are entertained in the room, in the chat. And uh, yeah, so what's the protocol here? Should we hang out for a minute, SMB? Should we take off? What's the deal? Um, well, if, you, if you'd like to end the stream here, I think uh, that would be more than justified after we've been live for more or less three hours. But um, yeah, just to reiterate, thanks to... Thanks once again for taking the plunge and uh, well done, basically. That I have nothing more to add than that. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you look at the chat right now, um, some you'll see some words of encouragement too, and people even even advertising your own channel for you, which is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Hardy, for doing the advertising for me. Uh, it has been amazing being on Twitch for the last few weeks. I do really appreciate the help from the Vubli guys has been absolutely an amazing experience. Uh, Chow Lucy couldn't even stay here. She was so nervous for me. Uh, she is really pumped about this, as am I. I want to be very, very uh, clear that I am incredibly gracious for this opportunity. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be seeing you guys again on this channel. Uh, if not, you can catch me at 9 Eastern uh, on Monday through Thursday, almost every, every one of those days. So 
Peace out, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks again to SMB. This was awesome, uh, and I will be killing the stream now. Much love, people.